Hi there, and uh, I thought I'd show you how to uh, paint this oil lamp that I made in 3D Studio Max. Uh, and we're going to paint it in Substance Painter. It's quite high poly, um, not suitable for a game as it is. It'd have to be reduced somewhat. Uh, but I thought it was a good object to paint, so uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And it's got it's an interesting one as well because it's got glass and metal. Uh, two different materials and I set up as set it up as a multi sub object as you can see with two different materials two material IDs one metal and uh, one glass and uh, I'm just going to export it as an FBX so we can get it into substance painter there we go oil lamp yeah all of my other FBX files export save that yes just uh, click these two that's fine that's all you need and click OK and export it and let's just jump on over into substance painter here we go so let's bring it in new all we need to do is select the oil lamp and just make sure the res is 2048 we should be fine and there we are there, there's our oil lamp Okay, you can see there's the two materials in um, that I set up in 3D Studio Max. It's come through quite nicely into Substance Painter. The first thing I'm going to do is set up the basic lighting, uh, and I choose you know different ones for different things. But this is quite neutral setting. Now we're going to sort of bake down our texture set. Um, I always add an ambient occlusion, which I do for the metal. Um, and I also add it for the glass. If I click on glass, there we go. Yes, I add ambient occlusion and I also add opacity, and that's really important. If you don't add the opacity, you're not going to get opacity basically. So you've got to have the opacity so we can have the glass on our lamp. Um, and you've got to change the shader for the uh, for the opacity to come through. You've got to change it to, um, to alpha blending, metallic with alpha blending. And that way the, uh, and that way substance will render the alpha. Okay, now we're just going to bake down our texture set, turn off ID, I don't, I'm not going to use an ID map for this one. And uh, bake, 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 do a quick, quick transition there, just so you don't have to sit and watch it. And there we are, there's our, there's our texture set, all baked down, ready to start painting. See the ambient occlusion working quite nicely, and I noticed this. Noticed a problem here with this. The smoothing group didn't come across on this little twisty handle thing, so I'm going to nip back into 3D Studio very quickly and sort that out. You can see it there. Okay, back into 3D Studio and you can see the same problem here, so I just increase the um, increase the smoothing group. Get the smooth between, you know, just increase the angle uh, to 90 and we, we smooth it and it's then fine if i turn off the edges there you go in there that's much better you can see it now look that worked quite well and that's quite easy to bring that into um to save it and set export it as an fbx again over the over the old ones there we go save yes You just bring it in as long as you don't change too much substance lets you remark you know we 
we load the model. Substance lets you re reload the model and it sort of merges it back into the same file. So you just go in and select the same file, open, don't change anything, you don't need to tick anything there. Just click OK and it'll bring it in and swap it out. We use the same maps, texture sets and everything and you can see that's fixed that. That problem there looks pretty round. Okay. fill there on the glass just to make sure it's all working correctly and I'll change the alpha there you go so that's working turn the roughness off turn the metallic up oh, I like to put some metal into the glass because it gives it a much shinier look and just make it just just finding a colour to paint it in there. This is when I choose the red, the red colour. I'm not going to keep this layer. I'm going to delete it in a moment. Uh, but I just want to decide which colour, and I quite like red. So <clears throat> yeah. Now I'm going to put a metal colour. It's blue, but I change it in a moment. Change the order of that or delete it. Yeah, delete. There you go. So, yeah, this has got the generators on it, so I can uh, adjust the, the wear on the on the edges and it uses the maps I baked down earlier to determine where those those edges are and where the wear goes on those edges. Uh, you can see I've just changed it back to red again just by altering the uh, material colour, the base colour on the material. And now I spend a bit of time just playing with the values in the generator for the the edge where you could spend a lot of time doing this and and I do in fact sometimes time it's just playing with playing with the values and and see what see what works and see what doesn't but I'm a bit of a painter I like to paint on the object and you'll notice quite a lot of the time I sort of paint just color onto a layer and then I'll go back afterwards and add some texture to it some you know I'll paint into the uh, into the height map afterwards rather than whilst I'm doing it uh, you know, I'm just adding a base sort of metal layer there with rust because <clears throat> I'm going to expose some of these parts as rusty metal later add a black mass so uh, so I can mass some of it out I'm going to use polygon select here to select the areas that I want to use this metal rusty or steel I think it was steel rust with I think it's quite handy to have that you can just go in and select the select the polygons pretty awesome it makes things a lot easier and then with my red layer turned back on you can see it's come through on the wire and on the handle. We work, we do some more work on that handle in a minute. It's not going to stay like that. Yeah. So these layers, this layer here is just a paint layer. What it lets you do is let you paint into any of the texture set basically. And here I'm going to paint some holes 
well, I'm, I'm painting basically straight into the height map and I'm going to create what looks like holes. I've got height color um, height color rough and ambient occlusion switched on that way I can make it black give it some you know give it painting to the normal to give it some height and um, and make it you know, dull so it's not shiny because I don't want these holes obviously to be shiny I want them to look like holes I think they look pretty cool actually now I do a whole series of holes in the top of the glasses top of the glass this kind of lets the heat out these are heat hose I think in the uh, the real world I think it's what useful to release some of the heat so it doesn't all build up and explode basically powerful package substance paint I really enjoy using it and here I <clears throat> just paint uh, again into the height map just to give this edge of this this uh, hand tw twiddly handle here some texture to make it feel like it's got a rougher edge to it you'll see I try various things as you can see various brushes I end up using a uh, hard edged small brush yeah, I'll give the end of it some shape first. Dink. Just make sure it's not too shiny. There we go. Yeah, get the height and depth of the normal. Right, first. It's just all these little details that make a big difference when you're um, when you're painting these sort of objects. You know, all the little details make up make up the whole. You know, they always say design is in the detail, and that's exactly what this is. Doesn't look like much, but it it's just something your eye notices somewhere in your deep conscience and the way the cat light catches it it just looks like it's um, it's got a, a ridged edge and I do the same for this twisty cap and I use the line tool here you can just hold shift and to click hold shift and drag the line and then let go and it does a line which is really handy i'm sure there's tools to do all these things but i like i say i'm a bit of a painter so i like to do things by hand a little bit Tick. Okay, and just separating some more of the object, um, making it more metal rust elements. Seems a little mistake there, you can just rub that out, so you bring it back to the red. Okay, now just try to make a little dent to give you the impression there's a hole here where the where the little twisty handle goes into the metal. It kind of works, you know, if you weren't paying attention as to how I did that, it would 
it be enough to catch your eye and go, oh yes, it's going inside there. Okay, now I paint this bit here where the wick burns, so I make it really sooty black, basically. Um, and you'll notice here, <clears throat> I use a layer, another paint layer. So these paint layers are good. You can just switch them on and off, switch bits and on and off. It doesn't. It's not like a fill layer where it's all on or all off. It's you can have bits and pieces. You know, you can paint height map in one section, turn it off, and then just paint the color in another section and turn that off and go back to painting height in another session. You know, it's all a bit of a mixed bag and it's, it's really powerful. Um, here I'm just painting, um, just, there's no height in this. Um, so there's, you know, it looks fairly flat and sooty and there's, there's no, uh, I've turned the roughness down as well so it's quite flat. And that's deliberate to give you that sooty sort of look. I think soot and charcoal, I think, is probably the darkest colours on earth or something, perhaps. <clears throat> it absorbs all the light, so... Um, yeah, I'm just dotting some lighter shades around there to give it some... There's a bit of some sort of burnt ash around the edge there. And now you can see I'm adding some height map there, just uh, just painting into the height map, just to give it some normal. Uh, and like I said before, I, I kind of do it separately. I like to sort of like detach the two sometimes. It's quite handy to do that. So you paint and then you and then you do the height, and you get the sort of impression that it's sort of bubbled up under the paint under the paintwork. Some more sort of grey, sort of ash, ash marks. And I attempt to put some even lighter particles down, but I kind of get rid of this pretty quick because it didn't work. So. convincing looking through the glass okay so here I use a stencil to emboss sort of a made in UK um, made in the United Kingdom sort of emboss on them in the metal and you sometimes get these sort of symbols on these things like stamps and I thought that was quite cool works quite well but you'll see by the end I, I try and sort of paint over it to give it a bit of a sort of chipped paint look and sort of worked but I did it I overdid it and later you'll see I, I get rid of a lot of it and now I sort of paint some dirt between the letters yeah, get the right color and I start sort of painting and I fade out because it takes a little bit of time so I sort of fade and and come back out when it's a bit more finished. There we go. So you can get the sort of oily dirt in between the letters, which is quite cool. This is why I think I. Yeah, I play with the height map here and I sort of sweep across it to take out some of that height map to give it a bit more of a, f a flattened look uh, before that I do this <laughs> I do the uh, dents around the bottom yeah you can see if you watch I kind of sweep across it
take off some of the white you can see there which I did not want There you go. Like, yeah, this is what. Yeah, so you can see me sort of sweeping, just brushing my brush across the height map there. And it kind of gives it a much more of a worn look. So some of it's lower than than other parts, and it's just quite cool. It just gives it a you know a bit more authentic look about it. And here I just play with some bumpy, bubbly sort of. Paint around the, around the logo to give it the impression that it's dented and paint have bubbled up over time. Some dense scratches. Yeah, and now here we go. I'll start painting some dirt all around the base of the object, of the lamp. Again here I'm just working into the height map just to get some paint bubbles. I mean when when an object gets hot and old paint kind of bubbles up and, and uh, you get that sort of bumpy look. center there and the reason why I do this two reasons a to give it the impression it's sort of indented slightly but to also get rid of the sort of like polygonal edges of that object object but this with this underneath it you get a really nice circle and it just finishes it <clears throat> really nicely and you, you can't see the polygonal edges of that object now unless you look really really close which you won't do with this object of course start painting in some dirt in a lot of the crevices and the smaller gaps and this is an oil lantern you know it's gonna get grimy and greasy and dirty it's going to gather in the smaller crevices so you know you want to get that across idea what I'm doing here so I just leave that and now we move on to the glass itself pretty straightforward really only requires two layers I think uh, one fill layer not a fill layer so one paint layer so you can adjust the sort of roughness of the soot that you put onto the glass and fingerprints and all that kind of stuff and the dirt Get the level of roughness right first. There you go. 
and start painting around the bottom to give the impression that you know, the glass has been burnt or it's gathered dirt around there. And then I sort of do a thinner layer just above that. And then I work around the top and do the same. <clears throat> Okay, here I start working into the actual normal of the glass itself just to give it a sort of texture because I just think over time it would have got scratched, possibly slightly warped with heat. You know, these, you know, it just gives it a bit more character. I think I use a sort of cementy, subtle cement sort of texture all over it yeah it just gives it that rough rough edge that rough surface and this is why I'm putting some figure prints on it I think I'll do the yeah just finish it just finish this off first stop painting fingerprints on them. I do them too dark initially and then I realise and I think no they should be you're actually putting dirt and moisture onto the glass you're not, you're not darkening it so I stop doing that and I change the colour of it so I'm thinking a lot brighter go around and sort of dirty it up some more and just basically finish off the griminess of it all uh, just paint into the weld parts of the uh, like that well down the handles more blackness and uh, dirt around the top and handling the crevices where it would go there. I know there's generators that do this for you but you know I like to do it by hand I think it's you know you get a bit more of an authentic feel to it and it doesn't take long um, I do use the uh, generators and the uh, smart materials sometimes but you know it depends what object I'm working on so yeah, and here I work into the height map some more Just bubble it up a little bit Here I paint both the, the dirt and the, the normal map both at the same time.
handles because it would be <laughs> after all these years been dirty and there we go I think yep there it is and that's the oil lamp done and dusted if you want to see you know if you want to see something specific an element of that at a slower pace I can do another video and, and I've got all this in slow motion it took about two hours I think in total so I had to speed it up um, so if you want to see or want any information about anything in, in particular then just let me know let me know in the comments and I'm happy to release slower version or slower sections of that so I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time Thank you.